Hey folks, welcome to another guide. This time we're going to deal with the Split Staff. The Split Staff, in my opinion, is yet another weapon that really doesn't get as much credit as it deserves. It is one of the most unique weapons. I mean, all the new weapons are unique, but I have a special place in my heart for the Split Staff, and it is one of my favorite weapons in the game. At first, I didn't really understand how to work with it, but now that I've spent a good chunk of time with it, it is probably one of my favorite weapons to play with, period alongside the sword but let's talk about identity of the sl of the split staff first and that is if you hold down the button you whichever button is for attacking or like a skill or a quick attack or strong attack you can change the nature or the form of the attack to do one of two primary things so first there is uh, with this mystic art you can have attacks have greater range uh, with this mystic art uh, those attacks that get greater range do more damage and then my personal favorite is this certain attacks that do a bunch of extra hits now get even more hits which is really cool so there's a lot of complexity to this weapon so even though the amount of skill slots uh, for the split staff which while already looks pretty diverse and looks like there's a ton of stuff it's actually almost in a way double because you can extend many of these attacks. So I'm gonna to refer to the hold button down mechanic, uh, either for range, extended range or extended hits, just as extend. I, it, in all honesty, there are so many variations to cover uh, in regards to attacks. Like, let me just show you, for example, with low stance. Uh, low stance, just quicks, just three hits, right? Well, throw one, two, three. All right, that's just normal. But then if I hold it down, uh, I couldn't do it there. All of a sudden, the attack changes, so it's almost like two different things. Uh, high stance, here's what it is normally, two high stance quicks. But then if I extend, I can get a variety of different things. Uh, the extended nature of any ability or attack is fixed. So, for example, high stance quick, uh, the second high stance quick. Darn it! Let me just do it with low stance. So for example, for low stance, it's always just going to be extra hits, it's not necessarily going to be extra range, it's just one way to change the nature of the attacks, but it's still a lot to remember. So Split Staff, in my opinion, has a pretty high skill ceiling and pretty high skill floor. It's one of those weapons that seems quite obtuse. Uh, most players that I've seen who use it reduce it down to pretty much two abilities, which is... Just do Dragon Dance, which is very effective. It's very similar to, say, skills like Water Sword or Kusari Gama's Reaper. And yes, it's absolutely a power play, um, especially if you can keep a target low on key or trapped in a corner or something like that. You can do a whopping amount of damage, and even Dragon Dance 2 supports that by utilizing all of your key so that you can get a unique attack buff, which does stack with other buffs, so it's remarkable. Um, the other skill that most players will rely upon is Shin Crusher. Won't even really bother going for Shin Crusher 2. And that's pretty much it. Uh, for the longest time, uh, I saw many other players uh, before one of the nerfs pretty much just spam changing ways. And in my opinion, it was overperforming. But they would use it as just like, oh, it does a lot of damage and it does a lot of things without really recognizing some of the amazing utility that this ability has beyond just Oh, it does a lot of power. So Split Staff is really about flexibility first and foremost. That is the core identity of it as hinted by Fluid Form, which you should really understand. And then you've got extra range and then you've got extra hits. So the one criticism with Split Staff that I see, and you may have guessed it, is that a lot of these attacks have very long animations. And you are right, they do and they can feel really wonky. Um, abilities like Twin Phoenix 3, look how long that animation is. Um, if I were to do it in real time, it looks like quite a lot. And that is a very long animation time, and you are right. Um, even Seesaw Strike, it's, it's cool, but it's a long animation. Or even Extended Shape Drift Strike, that's a long time. And the thing is, it's just really unclear when you can pull off those long animations without getting hit. So as a result, many players will feel this weapon is subpar. But holy cow, this weapon is absolutely amazing with its sheer utility 
Yeah, the ability to move around, hit things, be flexible, all of that stuff. And this is kind of the same vein as the spear. So you know with the spear I've talked about, hey, make sure you stay at range. Well, Blitzstaff has great adaptability as well. Um, I can basically stay far away to engage a target at afar with an extended strong. Um, if I'm lucky, I could get a horn break. But yeah, like... That's pretty far, that's further than most spear attacks. Uh, even hatchets may not necessarily be able to hit from as far away. Alright, like I can just safely attack him while his burst attack is going off. So, when you think of split staff, think of its ability to be very fluid. I'm referencing the passive skill, naturally. But there are many tools that you can rely upon in close range that are really effective. Now I'm going to touch back on Shin Crusher. Because Shin Crusher is absolutely ridiculous when it comes to key damage. In fact, I gave it extra key damage. The bulk of the key damage actually comes from extending Shin Crusher 1. Shin Crusher 2 is just a fancy follow-up. And there is a timing element to it. I'm not necessarily going to focus on that just yet. But you pretty much want to go for the extended hits on Shin Crusher 1. Let me show you the difference between just normal Shin Crusher 1 and Shin Crusher 1 Extended. That's a sizable amount of key damage. Nothing to write home about though. Oh, he dodged it. Thanks. It's okay, but then watch what happens with Extended. Look at all that key I depleted. Isn't that crazy? Boom. So if I decide to take the risk to deplete the key, I get rewarded. Look how much key damage that is. Out of key. So you definitely want to take advantage of the flexibility of split staff. And just Shin Crusher 1 extended alone, especially with the Mystic Art that gives it extra hits, does a whopping amount of key damage. And then against humans, you can lock them in place. That's another thing you need to keep in mind when it comes to extra hits. If you'll let me get extra hits. Is that... You can get a lot of stun lock. So extra hits, good for stun lock. Extra range, just as it was with the spear. You can hit targets from very far. And there are all sorts of abilities that can help you re-engage pretty quickly. A lot of stun lock. Even more stun lock. I'm at range, so what? Stun up. Up. Oh, hit from afar. Hit from very far. Oh, that didn't showcase it. Okay. Do your burst attack, please. All right. Look at the range of this. <laughs> so, yeah, you need to get used to doing basically a lot of stun lock and utilizing that range when appropriate. Split stop isn't just about that, but just to kind of further the point of the whole, hey, stun lock stuff, let's take a look at some of the passives. This weapon, I think, says passives help, and help elucidate what's so unclear about it. So. You can keep opponents at zero key and this weapon really supports doing that. So if you're keeping an opponent low on key and punishing them, there you go, you're doing it right. Um, let's see what other other let's see what other things that can help. I think that's probably the most unique passive. Have elemental damage as but staff attacks, yeah, that's not too telling. Um reduced key damage, of course, is very nice. But I really think that the fact that you can do a ton of powerful moves at low against low key enemies is very telling and as you saw against that human opponent using a mixture of extended range and extended hits i basically nullified the entire pressure that he has so that's what i really 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 want you guys to get used to but that's not it when it comes to split stuff let me actually take away my controller so i can talk about some of the really cool things that are present with split staff that can really help you facilitate the move set in general. So one of the really cool abilities that Split Staff has is Radiant Moon. You can leap over opponents. I have talked about this with the Dual Swords when I referenced Dual Dragon, and the ability to hop over opponents should never be underestimated. You can avoid many attacks, you can reposition to be behind an enemy, 
and it is stellar. Now its extended behavior is actually pretty cool too. Um, I won't need to show my controller feed for this, but let me show you the difference between so normal, normal jump. I can just hide UI, right? Yeah. Normal jump. Pretty long jump, right? Does some hits, pretty cool. But that extended behavior. Hang it, I didn't do it in time. Am I doing it? Extended behavior not only extends the range of the attacks, but what's actually even cooler. I mean, look at that range, it's pretty sick. It may not have been apparent with me slowing it down, but you actually get extra air time. So here, pay attention to the difference in the air time. Still pretty long, but then extended gives you just a little bit more air time. And that's pretty rad. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, the one thing with all attacks when they are extended is that you will usually have ex longer recovery times and greater key consumption. So I want you to pay attention right now to my key bar. I'm going to be doing Twin Phoenix, uh, Twin Phoenix 3. All right, so let's watch my key when I just do a standard Twin Phoenix 3 without extending it whatsoever. So I end at 1322 key, all right? Now what happens when I extend it for whatever it wants to be extended for? I'm at 1150 key, so there is a risk reward thing going on aside from just longer animation times. I am also working with extra key consumption, so it is kind of a double edged sword. You need to be aware of your key when you use this weapon and you also need to be aware of just how much of a recovery time you are going to add. Twin Phoenix 3, I might add, while it does have a long animation, is pretty awesome. But let me showcase this with a simpler ability such as Shapeshift Strike, which I have assigned to low stance. So, just standard. I want you to see how soon I can keep pulse. Reasonably quick, just basically when the animation ends. But if I extend it, there's slightly more downtime. Especially for perfect key pulse. Perfect key pulse, not too bad. It's noticeably delayed. So you need to be aware of this when you approach this weapon. Of course, you can use Soul Course to cancel out of any unwanted animations, but this is yet going to be a very tricky aspect of this weapon. And this complexity is what makes Split Staff a little harder to understand. But there are all sorts of cool tricks that you can do. I'm actually going to showcase uh, a cool trick involving pre-shifting. So let me actually get my controller feed back up to highlight this. I think this is actually really unique. So with the split staff, it has abilities that are square enders. So you have ebb and flow. Basically, after you do a strong attack, you can do a square ender. And if you're in high or mid stance, you get extra range. In low stance, you will get extra hit. So let me show it the high stance version. Uh, so extra range and high stance. Oops, I didn't showcase the extra range on that part. Alright, and then low stance. A lot of extra hits. Now you may be concerned about, hey, if I go for a low stance maneuver, I might get blocked, right? And you're right. And so what you can do, and this is kind of crazy. You can start firing it off, and this is actually a teaser for a later concept that I have to teach. But you can fire it off, extend it, switch stances, and then actually continue in a different stance, in this case high stance, to make sure none of your hits get blocked. And it will, as you can see, it's still performing the low stance extended behavior, or ebb and flow. Pretty neat, huh? And you heard all the blocks go off. Now, even normally the skill won't get reflected because it's a skill. But if you're worried about, say, the low stance, low stance triangle getting deflected, well, now you don't have to worry about it. Come on, man, block me. But yeah, you can pre-shift your stances. 
and keep whatever stance property you had in the beginning going. So even though I am doing low stance stuff and I've switched to high stance in advance, I can still keep it going. The opposite's also kind of true. So I can do high stance and then go for extra range even though I'm in low stance. It's kind of weird, huh? But it's pretty cool. Hello, range. Thank you. So yeah, kind of a cool thing. Pre-shifting is really valuable as well. Um, and yeah, this is definitely a teaser for a later concept. So, pretty neat. Definitely a fun way to use it so you don't have to worry about getting deflected. Another thing I want to mention, aside from the whole fluid form stuff, uh, and I, I can get, there's so much to get into with each individual ability is I want to talk about darting cloud so if you've played the spear I'm sure you've already heard me talk about pre-shifting and the value of it for skills like Rambo Ruse and spear flourish and the same thing applies for the split staff so let's stay I just want to do seesaw strike and then reposition I'll then make sure to pre-shift to low stance and then reposition as you need to or if you say hey I, I I'm gonna keep pulse but I don't want to worry about the darting cloud coming after a low stance maneuver and you can just switch stances and then go from there of course you can flux too so you don't have to worry about it that also helps but yeah it's really nice and then what's cool about darting cloud is if you extend it you get a lot of range it doesn't necessarily do a lot of damage and is strictly a repositioning tool let me again just verify this for you so that you know that it's explicit purpose all right just a reposition but I could hop okay I tried to hop over holy cow he did a lot of damage so yeah use it for that purpose of course be mindful of your key so it has a different function compared to rainbow ruse rainbow ruse can be used very offensively darting cloud is very strictly a tool to assist you in repositions but it's really good for the same reason that I like using Ray, uh, Radiant Moon. So many names. So yeah, let's just mix some of those things together. Um, let's see, I haven't taught too much in terms of moves. Fine, Chin Crusher 1. Oh, I know what I should teach. Well, aside from just keeping them permanently staggered. Super reposition! Alright, so let me teach you some real quick kind of like moves that you can sequence together combo-wise that I find really helpful. And I'll show them in action. So I have assigned to mid stance fill the void, which creates a lot of distance. And you may have seen me kind of do it there. I did fill the void. And then I did Darting Cloud to get right back in to go for a grapple. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Fill the void, pre-shift, switch to, pre-shift to low stance, and then I went for a grapple. Um, also, another thing you can do after fill the void is go into a roar power. So let me get them out of key. Come on. Roar power is generally pretty safe, especially on targets that are out of key. They look, whoop, boom, reposition if I want to. Hey, come try to hit me, man. Of course, you've got moves that can really assist you, really keeping some pressure going. So you want to abuse that absolutely. Of course, if you need to get in the thick of things, you absolutely can. So let me kind of illustrate some other really cool bread and butter things that you can use aside from just fill the void. Of course, right now I want you to focus on using extended Shin Crusher 1 for a massive amount of key damage. We'll worry about the timing element a bit later because that is admittedly a little tricky. And there's two versions of it. There's extended which gives you extra range and it's just there's a 
there's a timing element to it, so I don't really want you to worry about that right now, as opposed to just thinking about using the split stat for extra hits and for extra range and really just taking advantage of that, not necessarily playing as close range. So here's some other cool little quick things besides the whole fill the void, reposition, maybe aura power type deal, which is really fun, or fill the void, then go back in for a grapple. You know, that's fun. But here's some really cool things you may not know about. So, I am a huge fan of the low stance dodge attack. Holy cow, it may not be unique, but it's pretty fast, and many opponents cannot react to this. All right, I'll just show you that. Look how fast that is. Just normal hit. It's quite fast in the same way where the Switchglaive low stance quick is pretty fast. And then what you can do to make it even sillier, and this is what I do most of the time, is I'll do a low stance, dodge quick, then do another quick attack into Shin Crusher, all right? Nice key, bro. Pretty cool, huh? And of course, I'm going for Shin Crusher too, because I'm just so used to it. But he couldn't do anything, and I understand the corruption, of course, played a factor, but... Having that speedy option to enter combat is ridiculous. Half his key gone, not even have corruption on him. Will now though, and then he ain't gonna have any key. Oh, I happen to break the horn too, while we're at it. So yeah, that's like something really effective that you can use. Aside from that, here's something that's really neat as well. I strongly advise going for the high stance extended quick because it does quite a good amount of stagger and really isn't that much slower compared to high stance quick. Really not that slow. And the thing with the split staff is once the hits start going it's pretty awesome. So if you can regulate some of the slow recovery time with all sorts of abilities and know what to use and when to use it it feels pretty ridiculous. Straight up busted from time to time. All right, I really like high stance extended quick, especially into a seesaw strike. And I can decide if I want to go for an extended version of seesaw strike so I can make sure I hit a target. It really just does depend. But yeah, those are things that I really like to use. Also, here's some really wonky of, uh, behavior for the mid stance strong dodge attack, all right? It's this, this, I don't know why this is the case, but it's just the case. All right. You can just like sequence directly into another ability right away. It's like pretty cool. Yes, you use a lot of key, but if you can afford to do it, it's pretty awesome. So yeah, I mix it up with a lot of pre-shifting to just get some like extra hits. It's a little trickier with the extended, the extended version of it, if I can do it. I mean, it works, but it just doesn't feel as fast per se, but it's still pretty cool that you can do it. It just feels like a fresh combo start. Um, this unfortunately doesn't work with really anything else. Not as well anyway. But yeah, it's one of those weird things. Uh, the running attacks aren't necessarily the best. The one that I tend to use is high stance quick extended. And then for whatever reason, you can combo directly into seesaw strike. Like it's so weird. Why this is the case, I don't know. Um, let's see if it works with extended mid stance quick. I guess it does. I think it's just like the game kind of treats the hold behavior a little differently. I don't believe it works for no, it does not work for low stance extended run. It's kind of weird. But yeah, also another thing I guess I'll mention, because there's so much I could mention when it comes with this weapon. I don't want to really overwhelm you just yet. There will be multiple parts. Uh, so I'm going to equip another weapon real quick just to kind of illustrate the value. 
of some of these weapons. So a lot of the strong attacks, you know, while the high stance strong attack most players seem to gravitate towards, uh, mid stance strong attack is like, oh no, I'm gonna get deflected or whatever, right? But check this out. If you just do a standard strong, it's actually reasonably fast to do a flash attack right after. Just do a regular strong and then you can flash attack. Pretty decent. And then it gets even faster if you do the dodge variations of each of them. Really not too bad. So yeah, you can use that in a lot of your combo based play. Pretty fun, especially if you use secondary weapons like I do. But yeah, I'm going to leave that at that for split staff. There's still quite a lot I haven't covered, but again, I just want you to get comfortable with the idea of using these moves to adapt to various situations, whether that be get things like extended air time. Uh, let me actually get rid of my controller for this. Get rid of extended tab, extra air time, avoid certain sweeps. Um, also to get a bunch of extra hits on all sorts of things. Uh, and, and so you really need to get comfortable with adapting to that flexibility. And once you start mixing in those things together, it'll just feel like a nonstop chain of aggression and it feels so good. But yeah, I haven't touched on a lot of these abilities. I've, I, and so you can bet that I will get back to a lot of this in the follow-up guides for this. But yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys next time.